All right, guys. I want to wish a great welcome to everybody out there. It's been a little while, you know, since we made a video, but, you know, we're going to make one now. Hey, this is a time where we're cutting grass and everything, right? So uh, I thought, well, we've got a mower here. One of the little things I'm going to do a little different in this video is I can talk about stuff, as you've seen in the other videos, but there's some things maybe I can't talk about, uh, I forget about. Uh, you know, that's why we have the questions in the, you know, the comment area. It'll be like what we do at work. Uh, I got my good friend and uh, my co-worker, Mark. Mark, over here. And I'm going to be talking. We'll talk about the system. Now, this is all unscripted. I have no idea what he's going to ask. And any questions that uh, you may wonder out there, He's probably going to, you know, he's going to think about them. And so it's going to be an interactive video. I got my manual out, and I was looking at the wiring diagram. I don't know about you, but I can't make heads or tails about that, that kind of crap right there. So I decided that what I would do is I would go ahead and, uh, hey, what do you do? Do a Google, right? So I do a Google. Next thing, I come up. I see this diagram, right? Hopefully, yeah, there you go. Eh, I checked a few things. Some things are right, some things are wrong. Well, hell, that's enough for me to think, well, now I don't even know what I got. So what I decided to do, if you're familiar with any of these riding mowers, they're all tape. The harnesses are everything. Tape, tape, tape everywhere. So I just took all the tape off, had a whole bunch of wires laid out, and I traced every wire, found out where it went, and so I came up with my own diagram. Now this is what we're going to be looking at. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Alright guys, first thing we're going to do in this is we're going to talk about this here wiring diagram and specifically we're going to be talking about the starting system. Okay, so before we get really, really started here, let's talk about which mower that we're actually going to be looking at. Okay, before we get going on this here wiring diagram, it might be good to know what we're actually talking about. This is a MTD yard man riding mower. It's got a 46 inch deck and there is a model number there, 13A blah 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 blah. And coming down you'll see the Briggs and Stratton uh, engine that we have here. It's a 20 and a half horsepower. Got two cylinders. Got an L head configuration, 46 inch, 46 cubic inches and there's a model number. And you got your type and your code. Let's continue on. Let's get on the wiring diagram. Okay starting system before we get going too good into the diagram here uh, what are we going to consist of the battery the starter solenoid the starter motor the ignition switch clutch interlock switch and the deck interlock switch and you know what that's it that's the whole entire thing so this is what we're going to be looking at this area right in here okay it all starts with the battery battery is fully charged 12.66 volts. That's ideal. That consists of six cells wired in series. Each cell is 2.11 volt. Now let's see what we got. We have a negative post here on the battery. We have a black cable. The black cable goes out, goes to the frame of the tractor or the riding mower. That is also where the solenoid housing is at. Okay, let's do the easy part first. This is this line right here going through the contacts and then coming out and going over to the starter motor. Okay, so what do we need to get the current to come from the red post? Goes down to this here fixed terminal. Now, the plunger inside of the solenoid, don't want to talk a whole lot about the theory and all, but basically when we put 12 volts here and here, there's our ground, put a positive 12 volts there, and, my, and then this here plunger is going to move then it's going to make a connection between these two fixed contacts. Current's going to come down, go through this here contact, goes through this plunger contact. This here uh, contact is usually some kind of copper brass type material so it can handle a lot of current through for the starter here. Then it's going to come back up. It's going to continue to come back out on this here red cable going out to the starter motor. And the starter motor, as you can see, is grounded through the mounting bolts, which is through the engine block. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now let's continue. Let's look at the control solenoid. Now, 
the, uh, the control for this here solenoid. So we need 12 volts here, positive 12 volts to this side. Now I'm just going to back step. We're going to go down, 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 down. It's going to come here, go here, go here, go here, and back. Now, so we see where it's at. So I'm going to start at the battery. Usually, you know, it's easier to follow the battery and then get your way down there to the, uh, to the solenoid to be energized. So we start off at the positive post of the battery, red cable. Then we see that it's going to go to the terminal here on the uh, solenoid. We have another wire coming off this red going through a 20 amp fuse. That's the control fuse there for the solenoid. Then we also see that we have a red with a white tracer. And then we come to the ammeter. Notice I have two little turns of the wire right here. Well, this here ammeter is not like your typical ammeter that you've seen in the old days, like in the 60s and the 70s where you had the two posts coming out. Well, this particular ammeter right here has no actual direct connections. What it is is two turns of this here wire that's laying on like a little metal holder and the magnetic field is sensed by this ammeter that converts it into a voltage and then moves an analog pointer to show your charge and your discharge current. So now it comes on, same wire, still red with the white tracer. Then it comes in to terminal 5. Well, terminal 5 then in the start position, we'll talk a little bit about this switch while we're here. This is a three position switch. It has an off function, it has a run function, and it has a start function. Since we're talking about the start function, the voltage will be on terminal 5. You go to start position, it will go from 5 to 4. Now out of four, it's going to go down to the orange wire, then it's going to come out, continue, and it's going to come to our first safety interlock switch. This is the clutch or brake pedal interlock switch. And we notice that this switch here is closed. Well, this switch is a normally open switch. It's wired normally open, but it's held closed. Okay, that means that your clutch or brake pedal has to be pressed down to close this switch. So we continue on, we come out on the orange with a black tracer, comes over to our next safety interlock switch, which is for the deck. So the deck has to be raised all the way up to make this switch close. Again, this switch is wired normally open, and when you raise the deck, then the switch will close. And it will continue on, on the orange with a white tracer, going all the way up, there's our positive 12 volts, and once we get that voltage there, then this plunger is going to move because the coil is energized. Basically, you can think of this as a, like a starter relay, just a relay. And so when the plunger moves to contacts here that I mentioned, the current's going to come through out to the starter motor. And that is the whole entire complete circuit. Okay? Now, since I've already mentioned to you about the ignition switch, I think it'd probably be good if we take a closer look at those functions of this here switch so that you will be familiar with it. So let me get you a shot on the table to illustrate all of these functions and what these terminals are actually doing so we can see the continuity between these terminals. Okay, let's take a table, uh, look at this table on the left here. Uh, if you look right here, we got the switch position. As I mentioned earlier, we have three functions, off, run, start. If you look over here on this side, we have the continuity. And in the off position, we have the continuity between one and three. And in the run position, it's between two and five. And the start position was four and five, which we've already covered. Okay, over here on this side, you can see that we have the terminals, one through five. This over on the left, that's for, uh, for the Briggs and Stratton. If you uh, buy an aftermarket equipment, uh, ignition switch, then you're going to see these here letters which I have in parentheses and you may have already noticed them up on the ignition switch when we were uh, looking at the diagram. These over here are the functions uh, so you can see that so it's no need for me to read those out so that takes care of that. Now let me, uh, I'm going to took and add in a little bit of uh, video from Mark because he has a question because I'm, you know, I'm just doing a little editing back and forth here so I'm going to add uh, a little bit of his comment, which was talking about this here table. Wait. Oh, I got some. All right. What you got? Hey, right, Terry. Let's talk about the key switch test. You talked about continuity. Yeah. What does continuity mean? Does that mean there's a connection between terminal ones and one and three? That's right. 
Now let's talk about continuity and conductivity. Continuity and conductivity are two different things. Let's say I take a wire. Okay, you know, a lot of people, uh, DIYs, a lot of guys out there, you know, is my wire open? Okay. So they get an ohm meter and they'll take and put it across the wire and they'll check it. Oh, I got resistance. All right, it goes down to zero, must be good. That's the continuity test. That shows you basically is the wire open or is it closed? That's it. But does that test confirm to say how much current is coming through that wire? No. That's right. Only you can only check that with current. That's right. And by checking current, by having current coming through the wire, that means what? You're going to have to measure what? Voltage drop. That's right. Exactly. And you can't have voltage drop unless you have current, current. coming through. Correct. So that's uh, so that's called uh, that is called a conductivity test. Basically, you're looking at the wire, can it handle the current or the load? And you can do that by looking at the voltage drop that's across the wire, across the switch, across the contact, across the relay, contact, whatever. So right? continuity, you're saying continuity means terminals one and three are actually connected. That's it. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying that when you put this here switch in, in say, like the run position, right? You're going to have continuity or a connection between terminals 2 and terminal 5. That is correct. It okay. will make a continuity between 2 and 5, but that is not saying, hey, if I put my ohm meter on there and, and, I, got, uh, and, I, and I go to the run position or to the ohm position and I put my ohm meter on it and I check between 2 and 5 and it reads down to close to, say, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms, it's like, oh, it's good. No. All you know is that it is not open, right? But if you have any corrosion that's built inside of that, it's, the ohm meter is not going to never pick it up because the ohm meter is not going to push the amount of current through it that is going to normally go through those switch contacts that you would have under normal conditions. So you're saying to do a true test, uh, it should be running and current flowing through right. the circuit. Exactly. 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 You're exactly right. Now, I'm not saying that you can't put the ohm meter on there and, you know, maybe, and it might check open. That's right? a good initial test. That's a good initial test. But just because you check it and you've got continuity, meaning you've got resistance coming through and it's very low, you cannot automatically say that that contact is perfect and it's good and you can move on. You've got to check it under a load, which means you've got to have current coming through these contacts. And that's what we are going to try to demonstrate, okay? So is there anything else in here that you saw that that you wanted to you have a question about? I'm good. All right. Okay. okay, guys, you know that we were talking about that ignition switch, and I just want to show you ignition switch that came out of this here mower. Uh, this mower was built in 98, so we're looking at a 17-year-old ignition switch here. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it's, it lives up behind the fuel tank, and I really don't want to take the fuel tank out and hose and drain the gas and all that to get to it to show you that so uh, you know in the next video so I just wanted to show you that right now but one thing this most important thing I want to show you this is the orientation that I'm showing on the wiring diagram if you look right up here you see how this here uh, terminal here is sticking out by itself so it's oriented on the diagram just like I show well it turns out that Briggs and Stratton has the, uh, the the terminal numbers are correct and the function for what they're doing is correct but their orientation of how they show this which they do show that but they put the numbers all in the wrong positions it's like uh, about three of them across and uh, so when I was going through and doing uh, you know the <clears throat> preliminary stuff here to try to put the videos together I, I ran across that so I just want to give you a fair warning that if you do go to Briggs and Stratton or any place, it was like three different sites and I think one copies the others or whatever, but they all use the same pictorial diagram. So turns out, like I said, if, you, if you're strictly following the orientation of these terminals and basing that to where they show their numbers, it's going to be in the wrong position. So what I show on the diagram, what we looked at earlier, is correct because I actually, you know, took the switch out and actually you know did a continuity check on all of these terminals even though this switch is very corroded it, it, it is still actually you know functional so I just want to point that out to you okay guys it's a uh, closure time and unfortunately I feel the same way I've been you know boohooing for the last uh, few hours here 
Uh, but seriously though, I thought it'd be a lot better if you know the diagrams is up here, and and you know just put that out as one video and then put another video out for working out here on the riding mower. Because you know seriously, uh, how many people out here really really wants to get into wiring diagrams? And you know most people, what it is, you know I got a problem. Uh, let's say I put my key in my in the switch, I turn it, it goes click click click. You know, same for a car, riding more, whatever. Do they really, really want to know about wiring diagrams? They want to know, hey, what part do I need to change? So, hopefully, in the next uh, video here, we can go over this here and you know help some of the, help help, uh, help some of you guys out there. Also, I want to thank Mark for helping me out. Uh, you know, he drove all the way over about an hour and 15 minutes to get here to do this video. And I was being really ambitious because I was trying to do all of these different systems in here and well unfortunately you know we couldn't get all to it. So we did get the starting system, we did get out there on the riding mower, we did get some of the testing and all that done. But when I started looking back at the video and you know reviewing it to edit it I said my lord did we drink that much beer so both of us you know. So I think I'm going to have to go back and redo the test again and then I'm going to try to get as much uh, comments from him and I, you know, put some of this stuff together. So hopefully I can come up with some kind of good video here that's going to be useful. Uh, also, I want to thank the people out there, you, uh, for taking the time to come by, look at the videos. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it because, you know, there's a lot of other things you could do besides watching videos. Uh, so I do appreciate it and I do appreciate your support. And... Uh, be looking for you guys in the next video so you guys take care